I'm your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Interview Edition. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us on at DropMakeOfficial. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. Today's artist is also part of the poster posse and has created some incredible artwork that looks and feels different from the usual suspects you see around the groups and galleries. So sit down and take a glimpse into the world of Zi Jue. Jue? I hope I pronounced that right. She's going to explain it and tell us how we're going to pronounce it. So stay tuned for that and check this video out. Uh, out. Now over to Z. How are you doing, Z? Hi, I'm doing, I am doing pretty well. <laughs> the best you can do right now this year. <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, I, I tried to pronounce your name and I forgot how I did it the first time. And I wanted to ask before I started recording, but I I'm, I don't want to mess up the take. So you better you do it better and uh, let us know how how, how it is pronounced properly. Oh right, yeah. I mean, my first name is just Z. Mm -hmm. um, usually people get that right, but last name is is Xu. Uh, but I usually just like anglicize it by saying like Zhu or Xu. So yeah, yeah. But but for quick question on on the cultural side of things here uh, is that is doesn't doesn't it make you mad or anything if or because like you have to I know it's hard but I think people should try at least shouldn't they right yeah well so so I'm from China like I was born there mm -hmm. so uh, my Chinese name is uh, Xu Zetian uh, mm -hmm. but nobody in like the U S can pronounce that because in in Chinese you have like the tones and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it doesn't really make me mad anymore because okay. I, I shortened my name to Z just so it's like, mm -hmm. you know, the first letter of my name and people can can get it right. Um, but I, I also like get that it's it's like a cultural, it's like a language thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm not like if I try to pronounce German, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure like my German would suck right now. So, <laughs> so, it's, so, so it's really fine. What, uh, if people want to try, they're free to. What kind of German word do you want to learn? Um, I don't know. I don't, I like, don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any German really. I studied French for, um, for a okay. few years in school, yeah. but yeah, German, no. <laughs> but do you want to, you, you want to, you want to have a word, something that you like an English word that should I translate to you and you try to say it? Uh, I mean, do you, do you have any recommendations or? I don't know. It's going to be, I'm, I'm going to do a fun word. It's gonna it's gonna be butterfly because like that's like a German word that is like sounds really weird in, in German, and it's called um, Schmetterling. Schmetterling. Yeah, I mean you could. That was good. Wasn't too bad. Okay. Schmetterling. <laughs> <laughs> let's okay. let's see if you remember that till the end of the show. <laughs> okay, I I think I've heard that word before, so I'll I'll keep it in the back. Okay, perfect. Um, so. Um, first off, I, I'm, I'm doing a new thing in, in this year, and Matt Griffin was the first one doing it. And this is a speed round. And the speed round goes uh, something like, I'm going to say words, and you're going to associate something with that. And I'm going to do your uh, psychic profile after that. <laughs> Just kidding. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, yeah, you associate, uh, associate the words with them. Uh, could be either something your favorite or something that pops into your mind. Either or. It's, it's a deal's choice here. Um, okay. are you ready? Okay, wait, so you say something and I say like the first thing. Yeah, for example, I say the Simpsons and you say Homer or Doe or Marge oh, okay. or whatever, you know? Yeah. Something okay. like that. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay. First one is color. Red. Character. Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should really get that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Author. Uh, Neil Gaiman. Actor. Paul Newman. Actress. Uh, Julia Roberts. Director. Orson Welles. Tool. A wrench. All right. Book. American Gods. All right. Word. Sorry, what word? Word. Mm -hmm. uh, Schmetterling. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and last one is true crime. Ooh. Okay. Lisa Montgomery. Okay. Thank you for the speed run, but now you have to explain who Lisa Montgomery is. 
Yeah, she was. Well, I listen to true crime podcasts a lot. I know that's but, why I put that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did my homework. <laughs> Right. I recently heard about this case of uh, like a woman. Well, that's her name, but she was mm -hmm. recently executed in the U.S. But okay. she was the first woman. Um, she was like the only woman. She was the first woman to be executed in like the past 70 years or something. Okay. It, it's been a long time. Yeah. But she um, I think she she like murdered someone or something. I don't know the f full story, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were they were arguing her case for a while though because she had a lot of um, okay. This is really dark for a movie Go poster ahead. podcast. Go ahead. Right? I mean, that's we have time for that. People want to hear. Yeah, that. <laughs> true crime podcasts all the time. But yeah, she she committed a murder, and uh, but the thing is, they were trying to get her off mm -hmm. death row sentence because uh, they were arguing that she, you know, she had a very traumatic past, and yeah. you know, she was suffering from PTSD, and yeah. And all of that but that's like the first thing that popped into my mind all right interesting have you seen the the, the night stalker one on netflix uh night stalker oh about the um was it about the golden state killer uh or... i think the, i don't know and that's not golden state killer i think that's the, the, the there's one with the golden state killer but that's the one with um Patton oswald's wife i think uh, the one no, you're talking about but the Night Stalker is on Netflix. I think it's four episodes. It's about yeah. They just call him the Night Stalker, and he just basically killed everywhere. And had like in the eighties, like people were afraid to go outside. Oh, okay. It's like yeah, I think I've heard of the case, but I, I haven't. Yeah. I actually haven't gone on Netflix in a while. So uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely worth it. I really enjoyed it. it was a very good documentary. Mm. But yeah, okay. So much for true crime. Um, now let's get over to, to, to some movie posters about true crime. No, uh, that's what Chelsea basically <laughs> did. She had a lot, a lot of. She's also a true crime. Chelsea Lowe from also from Poster Posse. I interviewed her last year, and she's also a very, uh, very big true crime uh, fan. So uh, have, have you guys have you guys like a like a like a book club, like a true crime true crime book club or something? I do know Chelsea's work. I think we were. Um, it was like when we did the the Poster Posse uh, woman interview. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that was like, I knew we were together in that interview, but I actually haven't spoken to her that much okay. besides, but yeah. But hearing that she likes true crime makes me very happy. Yeah, yeah she, so. she does. So I think, yeah, you, you guys hit it off when it comes to that, definitely. All right, so I picked three posters that I really enjoyed um, of your work here. And um, the I, I first I wanted to to pick the Joan Joan of Arc uh, the 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 black and white version which is amazing but I'm not gonna do that but uh, I'm just gonna show it to the people because it's still available over at Black Dragon Press so go get it it's a very very cool poster uh, the, the you had a red variant which was uh, which is sold out and um, yeah but uh, my picks are a little bit older I think and um, okay. first one is going to be Lone Wolf and uh cup in red um let's hear about this one okay yeah so um i had done in 2019 and 2020 i had done a few private commissions so that was one of them mm -hmm. um but yeah i had never seen lone wolf and cub before then uh but i Except really enjoyed mandalorian the... huh? no i haven't seen the mandalorian oh, either yeah. Okay. <laughs> I okay. I'm not too big of a Star Wars person. I, like it's I've okay. seen most of the movies, but yeah. Um, but I, you know, I I watched the movie for the commission. Um, mm -hmm. it was for uh Stephen Piper. He was the commissioner. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, which, I had uh, done a. I'm sorry. A, a quick question. Which commission group was it? Um, Stephen Piper runs it. Okay, but uh, what's the name? Do you know? Like, uh, sometimes they have like F five commissions or whatever. So. Um. No, I don't know the name, or I forgot, because <laughs> okay. I'm not on Facebook that often. Okay. Um, but he he runs the group. Uh, but he commissioned it, and um, yeah, I I mean I really liked the the first movie, and I kind of wanted to do. Um, part of it was done in like traditional ink, mm -hmm. um, but I kind of wanted to you know reference that kind of like traditional you know Asian, Japanese, Chinese ink painting, mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, I, I really like the color red, so that's why a lot of my pieces are are in the color red. Yeah, I think people people got that from the speed round. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, but um, what was like? Um, what was the idea behind it? Like, um, what did you try to invoke here from the movie to to make this yeah. movie perfect? Right. Well, the movie was very um, something I like about those like old, you know, samurai or like old Japanese movies is that mm. it's very it's very quiet and like subtle uh, mm. until it doesn't <laughs> and get that way, until it becomes really loud and like you know, you have the guy with the sword and he's like slashing enemies apart. Mm. Um, but like in all the other moments, it's very like, um, it's very quiet. You know, there's not a lot of action. It's a lot of just like waiting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, instead of like a bloody action scene, I kind of just wanted to do something that's more subdued. Uh, so I think with that poster, it was, right. It was the, um, the father uh, and then Daigoro, his son, but they were in the first movie, there was like a scene with them just like in the hot springs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so I, like, I didn't want to do something like really bloody, you know, I didn't want to do something like too actiony because I, I didn't get that vibe from the movie. Yeah. I think that movie more like, like, I think those movies around that era, they're more about like honor or <laughs> just like, they're more about something, you know, on the, like, I don't know how to explain it other than, like, something more on the quieter side. Yeah, I, I, I totally know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, th yeah, that's great. I mean, it, it reminded me a little bit of, um, uh, I don't know if you've uh, played the Ghost of Tsushima? Uh, I haven't. That's That one's been on my list, though. I, I played it, and it's, it's really great. So if you, if you join on PlayStation, let me know. We can we can do the online mode. <laughs> Play together. That's fun. And yeah, oh, yeah, it's such a great game. And uh, I'm I'm also in a commission group uh, by Jay Kantu, who's doing the Ghost of Tsushima print. And uh, there, we had some previews in the group. Uh, they just look amazing. It's just oh my god, this is gonna this is gonna be a very very great piece by him. And um, yeah, and it remind me of this because sometimes you have in a game you go to this hot springs and like you get like more right. more yeah. stamina or whatever. And um, and this this reminded me of this one. So yeah, that's really cool. But this is not going to be the last Japanese movie that's going to be in this. But uh, our second piece uh, I'm going to talk about, which is not in red, is uh, Halloween. Your beautiful Halloween piece. And um, for what was this uh, piece done? And uh, what is the story behind it? Right. Yeah. So that piece was done, um, I think it was late. Yeah, it was late 2018. I did that piece for um, Hero Complex Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and around I had been, so in 2018, I graduated from college and I had been wanting to like expand my stuff more into like officially licensed prints for movies. Um, and so I began contacting a lot of people um, in that area. And I think Hero Complex Gallery was like, oh, hey, we're doing like, you know, officially licensed Halloween prints for the, it was like the 40th yeah. anniversary of the first movie. And so they were just like, if you want to make something, you know, we'll sell it. And um, yeah, so that was that was the print I made for them. Um, I think you're probably looking at the black and white yeah, one. Yeah, I do. Uh, I just like an orange. Oh, okay, I, I just want the black and white one. Yeah, yeah. There was also an orange one, um, but I like I didn't like the orange one as much because they were really because like it's orange. You know, you should. <laughs> yeah, they were, well, it was, it's mostly black and white, but like with orange uh, tints yeah. to it. But the was like yeah no, if you want to sell more prints you should really like put a color variant um and like i, I totally got what they're <laughs> what they were coming mm -hmm. from um so i also did that version um and uh yeah they, they sold it i think at like new york comic-con and it may or may not still be available on their website i haven't checked right. so people if you love this one go go and check now or hit the aftermarkets as always <laughs> Um, all right, and uh, the last print I wanted to talk about in this round is The Seventh Samurai, of course. One of my oh, favorite yeah. movies. That's... And uh, yeah, let's let's hear yeah. the story, what you did here in this beautiful poster, because I think it's really great. Oh, yeah. I mean, that one was uh, that one was pretty old, actually. It's probably one of my oldest posters okay. I have on my website. Okay. Yeah, I, that one was probably created either early 2018 or like late 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when I was first getting into um, AMPs. Yeah. And so, and uh, I was I was also in like a huge, I was watching a lot of classic movies. 
Um, and I got really into Kurosawa for a while and I loved that movie. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a print for this movie. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, it was also one of the first pieces, like I took up screen printing for a bit in uh, 28. So it was also one of those first pieces that I, um, did hand pulled screen prints for myself. Okay. Uh, I also like sold it to other people. Um, but now I, I don't have an access to a screen printing studio like I did back in school. So yeah, but like, you know, other galleries and places have picked it up since, you know, like Hero Complex picked it up a while back. Um, but yeah, I, with that movie, um, I, I mean, I love that movie so much, but it's also, I think the idea with it was that I wanted to do something with like the text of Seven Samurai. Like I wanted to make, I, I thought it would be like a cool idea to draw all of them, but to make like the seven be in the shape of the sword. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, <laughs> that's the story behind it. Yeah, it's, it's a great piece. I really, really enjoy it. And um, um, then I forgot my question for a second there, but um, yeah, but yeah, great, great poster. Let's leave it at that. And uh, I already pulled up, uh, since you said it's your first try, because this this would be my kind of next question I want to go into, uh, the way you started. Um, you said you finished college, and which college did you go to, and uh, how, or what did you study, and stuff like that? Yeah, um, I went to Maryland Institute College of Art. Um, it's an art college in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, so I went there between 2014 and 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, with that college, it was, uh, I had a good time, but I, I studied illustration there. And um, it was very, the program there was very he heavily focused towards um, like editorial illustrations mm -hmm. for, you know, newspapers or magazines and that kind of stuff. Um, I had originally wanted to do concept art for film and games. Um, just because I, you know, I really love creating stuff. I really loved creating, you know, fan art. And I also really liked to, you know, do stuff like environments and, you know, characters and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the classes there weren't geared towards concept art at all, <laughs> <laughs> which was something I would have known beforehand. Um, so, you know, because of that, I was kind of, like, I don't want to say I was forced to, but because of that, I was kind of like, like I kind of had to, had to shift my focus in illustration for mm -hmm. a bit. And uh, around, this was maybe like 2016 or 2017, but around then um, I began, uh, I, w I was having like this, this existential crisis because I was like, oh my God, I, I like want to do concept art, but like I'm not getting anywhere with it uh, at the place where I am. Um, and it was then that I started watching a lot of movies. And um, so first of all, to, to preface this, uh, I did not grow up like a movie person. You know, <laughs> I never watched, I did not watch any movies while growing up. So I had no clue what, you know, good movies were or all of that. <laughs> um, but in, in college, I kind of had this phase where I was like, I was having like a crisis and I was like depressed. And so I was just like, oh my God, I need to just like find a new hobby. <laughs> so I started watching a lot of movies. Um, and through that, I found the uh, alternative movie poster community. Um, and I found a lot of artists whose works that I really enjoyed. Um, mm -hmm. Like I loved, uh, I love Ali Moss's stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, like I found a lot of social media. Yeah, he's basically the, yeah. the, the, the founder of, or like the one who made this explode. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I was very inspired by them and like kind of their takes mm -hmm. on these movies because I thought their ideas were really new and, you know, having their own takes on these, um, you know, older films or like, you know, classic films, American films where like I really, I just really enjoyed seeing that. And so that's kind of what I shifted my focus mm -hmm. to. Um, and I think it really worked out for me because I realized like, I don't know. It was, it was just a change back then that I, I really liked. And I, I think everybody else around me saw that too, yeah. where they were just like, Oh, you know, you really like movies and you seem to be very passionate about this. Um, and so, yeah, like I started making posters uh, around that time and I have not stopped since. <laughs> so yep. that's great. Um, now my, my question came back to me. Uh, I want to ask what's your favorite Kurosawa movie? 
Mm, okay. I think so. That's um has to be a tie between. Oh yeah. Well, let's give us a top three then. Okay. Well, I th- like. Okay, it's either Seven Samurai or Ikiru. Ikiru. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love that movie a lot. Um, and then the third one, I'm blanking. Maybe Rashomon. I don't know, but I, I have a lot of Kurosawa movies I have yet to see. Okay, actually. okay, okay. So, yeah, it's tough. I don't know. It's, it's like mine is up there. Also, Seven Samurai is up there. Uh, Ren is up there. Um, okay. That's the one I haven't seen yet. Yeah, actually. That's, that's a good one. It's a good yeah. one. Uh, also, um, Rashomon. Yeah, love the book as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have to say, it's not his best movie. But I really liked. Um, uh, 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 oh no, never mind. Hidden, Hidden Fortress. Can't forget Hidden Fortress. And um, but it's not his okay, best movie. Yeah. Dersu Usada. Um, because like the story behind it is so crazy. There's like the Russian uh, government hired him uh, to uh, to to get this movie done, and he he went actually to, I think to Siberia. They filmed in Siberia and stuff like that with him. And um, uh, it is basically uh, the story of Yoda. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, like isolated little man uh-huh. doing hunting and like like teaching some Russian sh- soldiers, and that's like really interesting and um, has a lot of Star Wars stuff in it. And since I'm a big Star Wars fan, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was really interesting to me. But yeah, I mean, he has, he has so many good stuff. Joe Jimbo as well, and uh, I really mm-hmm. love that one. And yeah, other stuff. He's he's a, he's a good director, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you fir- uh, back to your first tries. I, I showed the screen printing uh, posters you sent me of the Seven Samurai, and there's some other stuff. Uh, Le Samurai, uh, the French version <laughs> of uh, whatever the, probably the Samurai uh, is in English. And uh, what was this one about? Where, where did this come from? Oh yeah, that was another early uh, screen printing mm-hmm. try of mine. Um, but yeah, I really love um, old French movies too. Mm-hmm. So that was that was during when I had the had that phase of my life. <laughs> um, but that was at the same time um, when I was just I was just doing stuff with like only line art. Like I barely colored, you know, my stuff. Mm-hmm. But you know now I I do either like black and white painting or I do like full color. Um, but yeah, I love that movie. Uh, I still have like people like the other day, someone like sent me an email being like, do you still have prints of this? And I was just like, no, it's so old. <laughs> so would, would you, would you do like a, like a do over of this one? Yes, I would. Um, I've been meaning to find the time okay. because I, there's like so many old movies I've done stuff mm-hmm. for, um, like Hitchcock movies. Like I, I did this old poster for Solaris that I hate <laughs> <laughs> and, but like, Really, I still really love those movies, so I'm probably gonna redo it sometime. All right. So and uh, yeah, I, I just pulled up the your Vertigo Blu-ray booklet you did, I guess. Yeah, it, that was um, when I was a sophomore in college. That was the first piece I okay, made. Okay, interesting. Um, that yeah, because it was uh, for a school assignment where we were supposed to um, we were supposed to do like a DVD mock-up mm-hmm. of like an film or something and the film that i was assigned was uh was that movie it was vertigo interesting and um so i i did that design for like the dvd and like the dvd cover mm-hmm. um but that was like it was part of what kick-started my my love for old movies mm-hmm. um and yeah and so like we didn't actually have to print it out and like paste it onto a dvd or anything but i really wanted to <laughs> and i i worked post office back then so we had like a printer that printed uh, dvd labels oh, okay cool and so I was, okay I'll, I'll just do this so that's sweet yeah I mean, you have that one on one yeah and i just pulled up your uh your solaris and you have a different samurai a different version of that one as well look looks like steel books right there in that sort of sort of way um yeah i was doing a lot of um, dvd mock-ups mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I bought these like they were like twenty dollars on eBay, so I just snatched them up. But they were blank steel books. Okay, interesting. And so, and I took like a screen printing screen mm-hmm. and like I, and I basically screen printed like a design oh, on top okay. of them. 
yeah, it took many tries, but <laughs> yeah. How did this help you uh, in your in your process of like doing like screen, actual like being the printer uh, in this case? Uh, did it help you in your art? I I think it did. Um, just because it, uh, first of all, to in order to do that, then I like after I learned how to screen print, like then I understood like what you know printers needed, mm -hmm. uh, and so now I can like better prep my okay. files beforehand yeah or i can just like separate you know my files by myself yeah of course mm. uh and you gave us a, a cute little picture from your time in college is this all all your work you've done is it for one um class or what is this well it was in your senior okay. show i think yeah and uh what's your favorite piece of uh of ones that we see there Uh, probably of the thing, <laughs> but all really old. So I have, I'm like, I have to, I, say, I have to yeah. say you, you wouldn't have picked the thing because like the thing is basically there's no red, there's no black and white. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, like, it's really hard for me to do a poster that's like not yeah. red or black and white. So, <laughs> um, Did that I was kind of like okay I kind of like I really like this so but that's like the only piece from there that I still want to you know put up on my website mm. um, yeah all right um, so everybody knows we're doing a lot of uh, movie reviews on here I talk about movies in general um, and I want to continue this obviously and my question would be what is the last movie that you have seen yes yeah, so the last movie I saw was uh, Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain. Last movie I saw in theaters before the pandemic yeah. was uh, Portrait of the Lady on Fire. That's, a, that's such, a, such a beautiful movie. Love that one. And yeah. Brokeback Mountain first time or rewatch? Uh, first, first time. First time. And yeah. thoughts? Um, yeah, I <laughs> liked it. Yeah. <laughs> that like, wasn't too enthusiastic. <laughs> I mean, I like um, Ang Lee's movies uh, a lot, but that was one I haven't seen okay. yet. And so everybody was just telling me, it was like, are you serious? You haven't seen Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> I was like, no, I haven't. Um, but, but yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I loved uh, Heath Ledger's mm -hmm. acting because I, I don't think I've actually seen any of his movies other than him as the Joker. Okay. So yeah, but uh, he was he was really great mm -hmm. in that yeah. movie. And um, I, and and yeah, but but I just wanted to mention on Ang Lee. Skip, uh, please, uh, Gemini Man. It's uh, not worth your time. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I've I've heard that. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna watch it. I have no plans. Okay, so. good. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so and what is what are some must uh, must see movies that will come out in the future? Could be also TV. Doesn't have to be theater. Uh, if something else pops in your mind, because the stuff you gave me is definitely uh, ahead this year and yeah uh i'm only excited about two yeah. things which is the matrix four and then dune of course yeah and dune as well i mean uh do you want to do some artwork for those um yeah sure i would totally do like try to do some like amps for those um but i mean i'm a big fan of the you know dune the mm -hmm. book um, so I actually, I haven't seen, I love David Lynch, but I haven't seen okay, his version of Dune yet. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I, I know like he doesn't like his version of Dune and I know a lot of people are conflicted about it. So <laughs> like I've, I've skipped that one. Um, and then with, I mean the matrix, I mean, everybody likes the matrix, Except um, two and three. love the matrix. Um, I, I thought two and three were fun. They were like fun. I, I, I agree. Agreed. Yeah, I agree with people in that, like, yeah, the first one was the best, obviously. And yeah, but I thought two and three were fun. Um, I'm I'm really excited. Like, I like uh, all of the things the, the Wachowski siblings mm -hmm. do. So, yeah, but I, like, I think they haven't done much. Like, they did Sense8, mm -hmm. right? And But I haven't seen them do much besides that. So I'm excited to see, like, what they're going to bring back. In, in the Matrix yeah. 4. They, they have been know? filming here in uh, near Berlin in Wallensburg uh, in the film studios. Uh, and uh, my, my buddy, he's an actor and he, he uh, filmed his uh, TV show. And uh, he, he, has, oh. uh, he has seen him a couple times around. So yeah, and uh, 
and was was like a yeah. little fanboy when when uh, when uh, one of the sisters came came along and like. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, by the way, I don't know if you if you know about this, but this little um, uh, little thing that they did for the um, for the production, they had like a they 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 call the project ice cream. That's what the Matrix Four is called, and they they made oh. a poster for that. It was like shaped in an ice cream cone, and uh, the, the oh. ice cream was on top, just regular ice cream basically. But the cone was in brown, uh, and the, the Matrix numbers going down into like a like into the cone shape and they had oh. like a red pill and a blue pill as like little uh, sprinkles on top oh that's really wait is it can i see it on google or i don't know I, no okay I, I don't know if you that's, can that's... But if i found it somewhere and people posted it and i want to get one but I, uh, sadly COVID made like something that didn't work out and i didn't get one yeah i mean that sounds really cool though I think when you Google Project Ice Cream Matrix. Yeah, I'm, I Googled it, but it's. I see, I see a picture of Keanu Reeves eating ice cream, but yeah. that's it. Yeah, I see that too, but yeah, it's, I guess it's not there. But well, if, I'll, I'll try to find it. I have it somewhere, but uh, I will send it. I will send it to you. All right, uh, and uh, yeah, what's what's your favorite movie then? My favorite movie. Okay, right now. So I I wanted to say Blade Runner, but the thing is, everybody. <laughs> Everybody's favorite movie is Blade Runner, so yeah, we, we, didn't have that. Much, we didn't have that many Blade Runners here yet, so it's all well, good. Like, I think it's like everybody knows it. Like, okay, I think my favorite movie right now that I saw in 2020 was uh, Perfect Blue. All right, let's let's hear about that because I have not seen it, but I read good things about oh, it. It's so it's so good. Yeah, it's a Satoshi Kon film. And uh, I had previously only seen a few of his other works, and I, I enjoyed them. Um, but I hadn't seen Perfect Blue uh, okay. until 2020. And I watched that for the first time, and it blew my mind. Um, like, have you, like, the way I could describe it is, like, uh, have you seen Mulholland Drive by David? Yes, I have. Okay. If you take Mulholland Drive and make that into an anime, <laughs> okay. make that into Japanese animated film but like you know shorten it and just like make it a lot I don't want to say better but like it just <laughs> very similar to that movie um but it's about this uh the singer who wants to she wants to transition into becoming an actress yeah. um and she but there's like someone who's who's stalking her mm -hmm. uh and at first it's just this really like there's there's like poppy Japanese music playing and it's just this really like sweet, you know, image of Japan in the 80s. Um, but as the movie goes on, it gets really dark. Yeah. It's kind of like a psychological thriller. And yeah, and like um, she begins like suffering from like psychosis and like delusions. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to explain too much if you haven't seen it, but it's. Yeah, it, it sounds good, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I was uh, was distracted for a little second here because it was uh, 6 p.m. here in Germany, and the drop came through. And I have to say, on air, I got a poster. Oh wait, you got it? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I think so. I'm. I'm just gonna see if it's gonna be available. And I, and it did. I it was confirmed. I got a poster. <laughs> oh my gosh! Congrats! So <laughs> thank you so you much. <laughs> during a podcast. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that was a live purchase. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah, so I'm sorry. Back to you. I I, I heard the whole time, the whole thing you said though. Um, and and I read I read about uh, the movie as well, and it, uh, it looked really really good. And uh, I definitely have to see it, and uh, we'll see it with my girlfriend because she's also a big anime fan, and I think she will like it as well. Um, and you you um you gave me also um by uh, uh, an AMP by Ethan Sharp. Um, is, is is there any other posters done for Perfect Blue, or is it this the is this the only one? I've only seen Ethan Sharp's AMP for it, mm -hmm. which is why I linked it. Yeah, I put that in there. But um, I haven't actually seen a, a lot of like other like you know private commission posters of it. Um, I there's a lot of like you know uh, other like fan posters of it. I'm sure, but um, I, I mean his was by far my favorite. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, would you love to make one for for this movie or? Yeah, I would uh, when I when I find out like what 
what the idea behind it will be. Because it's like one of those movies where um, it's very deep. And so there's like a lot of things going on under the surface. And so, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of ways you can make a poster for it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's hard. It's one of those movies that's hard to make a poster for, I think. Like the original key art already, you know, I think captures it perfectly. So Okay. And um my question would be also um like in what like how do you watch movies? Is that, is that like especially these these kind of movies? Do you watch them like with like friends or partner or whatever and like discuss it or how is it because like because I always love like talking about movies when I watch it with friends. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I always watch movies alone. <laughs> oh, okay. I found that like sometimes, uh, sometimes when I watch movies, I mean, like before the pandemic, you know, if I went to a theater, I would go with friends, obviously. But like, uh, yeah, I but like most of the time I, I do watch them alone because I found that like sometimes if I watch it with friends, like people will speak up during different times in the movie and I'll be like, no, you have to be quiet. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to this movie. Um, But yeah, I mean, if I watch a movie for like a commission, um, mm -hmm. I usually, I usually just like watch it, but like take notes yeah, 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 yeah. Watching it, or like do a lot of screen, uh, screenshots. Yeah. Okay. I see. Uh, yeah. Cause I, 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 t I totally understand what you're saying in terms of, um, having like people talk between it. That's why I, 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 I'm invited to, to like press screenings and stuff. And yeah. The good, good thing is people know how to behave on this. There's no talking. Yeah. There's no cell phones because the the movies come out early, so you have to you to give up your cell phone at the, uh, the entrance. And it's like you can watch it perfectly, and afterwards you discuss with your colleagues. So it's like even yeah. though the, the good thing is even though if people didn't like it, it's not like oh it's a trash movie. It's more like oh yeah I didn't like it because this and that and that. So it's more of a, a, a conversation, and I, I really enjoy that part. So, and uh, um, my girlfriend, she is uh, she's a uh, she's a screenwriter, and mm -hmm. um, She uh, like so she loves to watch movies as well, and we like talk about it a lot in terms of like structure and stuff like that. So that's it's always fun to dissect the movies, um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's always a good good thing to watch movies like that. And I also, you know, I love to watch movies early in the morning, 10 a.m. It's the perfect time to watch a movie. But I don't know, there's there's only a few people who share this kind of <laughs> kind yeah. of uh, thinking. I I haven't uh, heard. Yeah, yeah, you're like. I guess like one of the only people I've heard from who likes uh, early morning movies because usually I like it when it's like all dark out. So and then I can turn off the lights and you know it's even more dark. If, if you watch so, it at home, but I love like watching it at the cinema. Okay, yeah. You know th it's dark there. It doesn't matter what time it is at day. But for for most of them, it's like ah uh, well the day is the day is over. You feel like so like like for them it's like an evening thing because after that. You basically right. just talk about it a little bit, then you go to bed. But the rest of the day right. is still there, you know. But I, I like that fact. I like to watch it, talk about it. Oh, and then let's do another round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I I should try like more uh, morning watches then. Yeah, go go for it. Try it. Let 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 us hear what what the what the experiment came came up with. Um. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, go over to our next question, and this one would be um your favorite posters as of right now um oh I mean, yeah you, there's one thing i don't know you you gave me yours right because you yeah in the question you were like i know there was the brackets and then you put like alt like posters alt slash yours so i was just like is it my favorite posters from other people <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so was it like Did you mean like other people? I meant other people, but uh, we okay. can we can still talk about uh, the, the other the, the first one. Let's talk about you. I mean, I, I love it. So let's talk oh, about this one, Joan of Arc. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope this doesn't like seem like like I'm a narcissist. To, like, no, people other... people heard you got the question wrong. So. Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. If I talk about my favorite, okay. Let Let's do that. Um. Yeah. So the Joan of Arc one. Uh. That one was for Black Dragon Press. Mm -hmm. And, um, like it was like a month ago where I got an email from James who runs Black Dragon Press and he was like, oh, hey, we're actually releasing this with Mondo as well. And I had always wanted to do a release with Mondo. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was like a, a co-release. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, I'm, 
yeah, I was pumped for it. Um, but yeah, I was, I mean, I love that movie. Uh, the, the red one sold out on Mondo, which I'm very excited for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was really Joan of Arc. Uh, and that was, I think what, it's like my favorite piece I did in like 2020. Okay. All right. And uh, do you have like, some others at, at the top of your head that you like from other people? Um, oh, right. Posters. Mm -hmm. Could be, could also be key art, you know, if you like a key art poster, because, um, I, for example, I really enjoyed the uh, Malcolm and Marie one that came out lately. Yes. Uh, okay. That looked really cool. Really enjoyed that one. And some other stuff that I saw, uh, the commercial for Jeep, I think it was, uh, mm. and it was an illustration. I saw it on LinkedIn. Some, I, I forgot the artist who did it. Uh, but I, it was just a day and that looked really cool. I really enjoyed that one. But, um, uh, do you have some others that look? Yeah. Well, thinking about like my favorite poster artists, um, so it's hard because I follow, like most of the artists I follow aren't poster people, but um, I do, I really liked um, all of Rory Kurtz's releases last year. Like the Parasite one was, it's, I don't, I don't collect posters, but I wanted that so much, but I was like, oh no, I can't, <laughs> I don't collect posters. So Come on, what time did you could have grabbed that one? Yeah, but I mean, oh. Yeah, maybe. I tell you, it looks amazing. I, I just I just put it up yesterday and uh, or the day before, I think it was yesterday. I put it up in the, in, the, in my bedroom. Yeah, I I really like the colors um, of that, and uh, yeah, his work is just really nice because it's like, it's it's so like accurate and like he gets a level of detail that not a lot of other artists are able to get. Mm -hmm. um, so I really liked you know his parasite um, poster. I really liked, hmm, uh, I'm on Twitter a lot. So I've seen yeah. a lot of, um, I actually, like we were talking about James just before, yeah. um, but I got to know James like a little bit better last year. And oh, I think some by, of the- By the way, like, for I, the people that, that they that don't get confused, there are uh, three gallery owners that I know of that are uh, that are named James. It's James Hobson from the Art Gallery. It's James Hanshaw for Vice Press News, and James I don't know what his last name is from Black Dragon Press. So there's a oh. lot of James's people. So don't get confused. I mean, James, 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 like James Hobson. James Hobson, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really liked. Um, I, I think his stuff is really like it's really underappreciated too. Like I loved his Tenant one. I love his Clockwork Orange one. Yeah. Um, really want his work to like get Have more attention. Have you seen his alien piece? No, I have not. Okay, then then wait until the, for the full release. He teased it a couple times, I think, on Twitter. And the full release, I've seen it, and I, I've talked to, to, to Matt Griffin about it as well in the last interview. And it's such an incredible piece. And I, I don't know, people, people, yeah, especially galleries, go take a look at this man. He does great work, and I think uh, this alien piece looks just so damn good. Yeah, and he's really friendly too. He so. is. He's such a good guy. Yeah, um, that's, that's why I have him always on on podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and I think my third one. I really, I've been really liking what uh, Viet Viet An uh, yeah. Viet An has been doing. Yeah, I, I think you know their their recent releases. It's like very, it's really colorful. It's very like graphic, but like stylized and just mm. just the right way. You did. Um, you did this beautiful travel series with Mora. Do you see that with the food? Uh, no, I have not. I think it's still available on Mora Art. If you um, well, maybe I can Google that as well on the site here, so people uh can see that as well. But you can you can Google it as well. We're gonna do it together. Okay. Yeah, I have seen. So I was just thinking, uh of him because I saw his uh, Wonder Woman 1984 and I also mm -hmm. saw the, uh, the new Demon Slayer poster okay. he did. Yeah, I, I really, really like those. And it's it's also in like a style and like approach that's um, it's very, it's, it's more stylized and it's different from like a lot of the other things I see, so. Okay, there it is. It's called uh, Via An uh, Cancelled, Trip Eats, Japan. 2020 because he wanted to go to japan and uh he uh released this poster which uh, has like different colors um and has like food items like in a grid and it looks really cool really loving it yeah. 
and this is this is a really cool piece. I would love to have all all those uh, all those different ones in um, in uh, like five by five version, and like I'll mm. put them up in the kitchen. I think those are some great kitchen uh, posters. Uh, right now, I have dinosaurs by Ryan Shumate also from Art Gallery up in the kitchen, but uh, you can't oh, can't eat those. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's that's a great piece. I really enjoy it. So yeah, more artists uh, pumping out some really good stuff, so people will pay attention to that. Um, and uh, I think I think when I uh, I talk to James, and I think he has you in mind for some project in the future. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna tell you off record. I hope I'm not I'm not saying anything wrong, James. <laughs> well, I am I am always available, or yeah. so I'm I'm just gonna be here waiting. <laughs> All right. <I> <laughs> Okay, so um, since we talked about uh, uh, collecting, because you mentioned already, you do not collect um, really, but um, is, is there uh, is there something that you collect in a sort of sense, or? I I mean I collect like well with posters I don't collect because I I don't have the money to collect posters right now. I would love to collect someday. Come on, uh, you I make do, me look I'm, bad now. <laughs> No, but like I, I, mean, I look like I, I'm super rich now. <laughs> no, it's like I mean I just don't want to like I do spend money on art and you, mm -hmm. it's usually like my friends' prints. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of art that my friends send me and you know that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, I recently got like a, a cork board full of uh, just like all of the the prints I've gathered from like friends or like mm -hmm. acquaintances last year. Um, but yeah, I I would like to collect posters someday. But I, I also like, I need to plan out, because I feel like, you know, if you're a poster collector, you got to have like a lot of space on your walls and you just got to like, like plan out you know, what are you going to frame and all of that. But this is, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I did this very meticulously. I, I have around uh, 200 posters and mm -hmm. or 200 like artwork that I could put up. So they're not all posters, but mm -hmm. uh, or, like hand bills on there as well. And um I um, basically measured all of this, put it in pixel. Like this is like uh, the height is like 2.8 2, 2 meters. And so I put like 2,800 pixels. And I did the same with the, uh, um, like with all the other measurements. And then I basically measured the posters, gave it a little frame on top, so a couple of pixels more. And Aww. I put it all in Illustrator. All my images, all, like all the posters I have are in Illustrator in, in yeah. one file. I can drag and drop on the wall and change it up and and, and and do all of that and figure out the layout. So that this is basically why I did redecorating. I, I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram. I put it in a story yesterday because like, I redecorated like every wall in the house. Whoa. Oh, okay. That's so much work. Oh my God. I know. It, it's been two yeah. days, I think. And, and I tried this one out with... Uh, um, with uh, um, uh, what's it called? With the uh, with the vel Velcro, because they are not screwed in. I used to screw them in before, but they all Velcro. Mm. Yeah, that's. I mean, your wall looks really great. Thank you I very much. Yeah, because it's it's also just like I, you know, if I ever collect, I would have to think about framing. You know, I have, I would have to do what you do because I I don't want to like you know collect posters and then just like pin them up like haphazardly. You know, yeah. I have to. Yeah, I want to treat them with care. So yeah, I definitely do. And that like flat file back here, it like helps a lot mm -hmm. to get all your art together and like do it. And I, I yeah, um, I'm gonna show you later. But the, the or, or, you, or you you can see it on Instagram. It's like because I have like because I just got in from Spoke Art all like architecture stuff from the Frank Lloyd Wright show, and I put them up okay. uh, in a, in a new way. And I oh I see I have to tag uh, 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 Spoke Art again because they, they did this time they had only one. A 24 by 36 inch poster, which is uh, which was uh, pretty bad in my case because I have two 24 by 36 inch up uh, uh, from the last show, and I don't mm -hmm. I can I cannot change it in a different way, so I'm basically screwed, and I have to keep one always one poster up from from the show before, so there's it's not going to be that much changing, but um, yeah, but but you will see we will see if you can, if you look at Instagram later. Um, yeah, coming back to um, the last piece of art that you put up, or last poster, or whatever you put up. Um, oh, the last piece of yeah. So in my house, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> so I really like Blade Runner, right? Um, I, I was passing by, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was passing by, um, cause I take walks around my town a lot and I was passing by the local bookstore mm -hmm. and I saw this like poster of, uh, it, it was a uh, Rutger Hauer from Blade Runner. And I, I saw that it was signed, like he wrote like a autobiography or something. And apparently mm -hmm. they put a poster of it up and he actually went to the local bookstore and signed it and then did a signing. But this was, this was probably years ago because I, had, I hadn't heard of it until like I saw the poster mm -hmm. through the window. Um, and I saw that he signed it. He like misspelled his name too. What? And so it's just like, oh my God, I really want that. And it was a hundred like a power. <laughs> sorry, what? Uh, yeah, sorry. You, you so, oh, sorry. What did you say? I said Rutka Bauer. Oh. It, it says on there. Yeah. I just pulled it out. <laughs> so, it's so funny. Yeah. Um, but I, I really wanted it. Um, and so I got it. And now it like just sits. How like, much? Very, it, it's, uh, how oh, much? how much was it? Yeah. Uh, it was 125. Okay, that's okay. I mean, was, look, looking at it, since he spelled his name wrong and said sorry, that's that's got to be worth something. Yeah, yeah. But they were selling, because um, a lot of celebrities come to uh, this bookstore in general and like do signings and stuff like that. Um, and so apparently he was one of them and I had never heard of, I had never heard of the event. Okay. Um, but they were selling, they were doing an auction of uh, okay, a lot right. of the and like so that was one of them um, um yeah what uh, uh uh what city do you live in and what, what bookstore is it or is it oh, should we keep so a secret i live in uh, ridgewood new jersey mm -hmm. so yeah it's upper new jersey it's very close to new york city um okay. but the bookstore is bookends so okay. bookends and um yeah i i don't know why people <laughs> people come here but a lot of people do so they do a lot okay. of signings and, okay yeah and where did this uh, beautiful piece of art go? Um, yeah, it's sitting right by me. It's like in the same room here, um, but it's by this like fireplace. And it's because I, I can't find like anywhere else to put it right now. So <laughs> it's a stand, you know, there's like a stand at the back of it. So it's yeah, okay. just, yeah, it's All plopped right. right. All right, interesting. And uh, you gave us also a photo of your uh, office and uh, your desk there. Um, like, what you said, but it, it looks, I, I have to say, it looks a little bit like spa spares, you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's not much going on, nothing too fancy. Like, I don't know if it compared to mine with three, three screens. Last week, uh, when, I, when I talked about Griffin, he had like four screens up, two different computers and, and, and uh, Huawei yeah. tab and stuff like that. But uh, why, why do you like to, like, to keep it simple. I mean, even on the desk, it's very clean and simple. Yeah, I, right. I really like simple stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, um, I was actually on another podcast uh, a few months ago yeah. and I, we were also talking about desk setups and I showed, um, I showed her my, uh, I showed the host my a picture of a de mm -hmm. my desk. She was just like, there's nothing on here. And I'm just like, that's right. It's only like a desk. <laughs> like my laptop um the cintiq ipad like that's all i need and like Should, um why a diffuser. Not, yeah why not a plant or something <laughs> i do have i have two plants um but they're sitting on another table nearby okay, okay. i just but i with desks i really like i can't work with with mess like mm -hmm. with a messy area so it like it, it just has to be clear um i clean a lot like i'm very neat <laughs> <laughs> like as a person um so yeah it, it actually like it really bothers me like seeing a lot of artist desks with like so much stuff on it and if it's like everything's not <laughs> perfectly organized i just get, get like so stressed <laughs> I'm like do you need me to come to your house because i can like i can really like i love to clean <laughs> i i will gladly organize yeah. the desk. you shouldn't say that too loud you're gonna get some inquiries now <laughs> yeah I mean, but it just like, I'm just that type of person, but I also know like, like a lot of other artists, they have to work with like a billion stuff, you yeah. know, lying. Is your, is your, desktop, is your desktop, uh, is it, is it like, like clutter free as well? No files, nothing? Yeah. There's, right. there's zero things. All right, good. 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would love like you can clean up my desk, but I don't know how that's going to work because I have like tons of cables going on, which is like mm -hmm. everywhere. And I got, I got a ring light on my left. I got a regular li light on the right here. I got like yeah. the arm for my for my phone. I got I got the, the arm for the microphone. Yeah. And then there's like pens, like 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 my teacher, red pens are laying around. And oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. can you do? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no other way around. I would love to do it a different way, but it's all needed. And I can't do it in any other way. Right. I mean, with me, it's, um, I can, I can handle cables, you know, it's just like when people have extra stuff lying around that they don't need, Okay. Yeah. Um, extra pencil, much. like papers. I'm just, or when they're, uh, when their computer or like, you know, tablet, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes I can see that it's dirty. <laughs> oh, and so I'm, yeah. God, you have to wipe it down <laughs> right <So>. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. That's uh, that's one of the things I don't like as well. So, yeah. All righty. Um, so we've seen you a little bit of your apartment, your office. Uh, is is that? Um, do you live in an apartment or house? Uh, how how like is that? Oh yeah, I right. So I live with my entire family. So okay. we yeah live in a house, New Jersey. So. All right. Okay. So is that, uh, but your office is not at the same time. Also your, uh, your bedroom apartment or whatever. Um, oh no, it's, um, I have this neat little space to myself. It's, it's in this room. That's, um, like it's, it's like the room that's adjacent to the, the porch or mm -hmm. like the backyard outside. Yeah. We could see it in, I think a little bit in the, in the picker. Yeah. So there's like a lot of, um, there's a lot of good like natural lighting coming through. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's I mean that's what I love about my apartment. You can't see it right now because it's already dark here, <laughs> but in the summer you can definitely. It's like uh, I have like a southwest balcony, so I, <laughs> I get like the whole day. I have sun on the balcony in the apartment. They have like floor uh, top, like floor to ceiling windows, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, so it's like really really good stuff. I, I I'm, I'm glad I have this. <laughs> I enjoy yeah. the light as well because it's so important. You know, you'll feel like claustrophobic yeah. in the darkness. Yeah, a lot of people, I think a lot of artists are like, they're missing vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't stay in a have, cave. Yeah, if you have a space with a lot of windows, that's, yeah. that's really good. I know people can't tell, uh, look at me because I'm like so pale, but, <laughs> but I get vitamin D, people. Don't worry. It's just, <laughs> I have the vampire look. <laughs> mm. Um, okay. Um, next thing is since we talked about your desk, I want to know, um, are there any projects you're working on right now? I've seen you are now a comic book cover illustrator. Yeah, I do. I recently did, um, it's my first cover, first variant cover for DC comics. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I wanted to expand. I mean, I had always been working like posters was always, like one of the things I did. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't really my main thing because I really like to step um, in other areas as well. So mm -hmm. last year I really wanted to get more into comic cover art um, mm -hmm. just because I had a lot of people telling me my art would work for that area pretty well. Um, and it was kind of this, this really strange thing from the universe where I like set that intention. I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna do more comic covers and then I had DC reach out to me um, around December. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, do you want to do you know, something for The Flash? So, yeah, that was kind of just like something wild that, you know, happened. Um, but besides comic covers, I also do concept art for mm -hmm. film uh, commercials and also games. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't see it right now because uh, most of it is under NDA. Of course, um, you always. Yeah, like it's the, the pain of all artists, <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I do a lot of concept work. Um, I'm currently working on an indie game with with a few other people. Uh, but right now, I actually just finished up like a batch of work at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually, I think I'm like free. Like I'm almost free. I have to do this one thing for a for a client. And I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. Yeah, um, don't. We, don't, we don't want to get in trouble. Right, yeah. Don't want to break any NDAs. So. Um, I know you did DC now, but do you also want to do Marvel? 
Um, yeah, I mean, if I, I've already like sent my work to, you know, all of the comics people and like Marvel, mm -hmm. you know, Valiant, um, yeah, all of them. So, you know, if it happens, then I'll be more than glad to do it. Like um, the, the thing about comics is that, um, I know that not a lot of people do it full time, mm -hmm. you know, just because I think that, you know, like a, a lot of like comic covers don't tend to pay well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and I mean, comics as a whole industry does not tend to pay well at all. Um, and the other thing is that I don't like, I, I have read comics in my life, but like, it's not, uh, like I don't really read it for fun or anything, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, I'm not too passionate about it, but if I get more work, like I'll be glad to <laughs> Okay, people get her more work. She so she reads more comic books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I had a Batman phase though. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, uh, what I wanted to ask. Oh yeah, did you talk with Dolly about it? Because he is he's done some some cover art uh, recently. Yeah, I, I love his work. Yeah. So so uh, he, he would be somebody you I think who could you like who could help you get in touch with people. From the right book world yeah i've i've talked to a lot of cover artists but um yeah i mean i i have talked to Dolly, but i not about comics yet so all right all right good <laughs> um next question would be how do you approach your projects in general is there uh like or like an idea how, how did you get from uh from zero to 100 basically how much time do you plan in um and you know, stuff like that yeah, um, with approaching projects, I usually, well, if it's like movie related or um, I, I usually search for a, a scene in the movie that captures the most emotions or where the character is doing like an interesting pose, you know, or something like that. Um, and then I will try to recreate it. Uh, I do use a lot of reference. Um, mm -hmm. And if I don't have like the correct reference, I'll, you know, use one of those 3D modeler things and like make a... Oh, you're good at that? Uh, no. Well, I mean, I, I just use one of those like pre-made like 3D oh, models okay, okay. and then I pose the characters. Uh, um, sadly. I just wanted to ask if you like, you know, if you, if you do uh, photos yourself, reference shots, like like some other oh, artists do. Yeah, I, I also do those. Okay, you have those? Um. I, I do those, but like I usually delete them afterwards. No, you can't. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, I don't take a lot of photos nowadays because I, especially for movies, because uh, I'm like, I, I'm kind of a small person. <laughs> and it's just like, if I do, because usually like the people I illustrate in movies, they're like, you know, they have like guy muscular bodies or something so it's just like i can't even use i can't pose for that okay, um okay. so I, I just have to find something on the internet or just like you know do do the model thing yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay yeah but, but how tall are we talking five 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 six yeah around five five all right yeah all right. okay fair enough that's uh almost a whole foot <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i mean between us oh okay Wait, so you're, oh, so you're really tall. I'm kind of tall, yeah, 6'3". Okay, yeah. Okay, um, and yeah, so how much time do you plan for a project? Is it something like, is it, are you just live off deadlines or, because like, yeah. you know, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I live off of deadlines, um, you know, as long as they give me a deadline, I'm, I can plan. Hmm. And is there something particular on, 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 on the, when like, uh, let's say when it comes to prints, is there something particular you like how the prints come out in terms of paper, colors, something like that? Um, no, no, I have no preferences. Um, as long as the, yeah, I just leave it, I really just leave it up to the, to the printer. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Right. I, I have no clue about papers or like, I know what a G clay is and I, yeah. I know like, you know, various screen printing papers and all of that, but I'm, I'm kind of just like, I don't really care what you printed on as long as it looks good. But so like, do you have like color preference for, for example, is that, is that something that you would like suggest? Because like I heard, we had like, when I talked to, um, Matt Taylor about his Palm Springs piece, he was like saying that he found this 
with Mondo and this very cream-ish kind of paper that he really loves and he uses it in a lot of a lot of uh, his prints. And is that something like that for you, or you just just don't know anything about that? No, I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I think like I'll I'll learn more of it as I as I go along. Okay. Um, but yeah, because with me, I'm I care very much about like the way I draw and like the way the piece looks. Mm -hmm. But like in terms of the printer and like the the color or the the color and also the the paper it comes out on, I don't know anything. Oh, all right, so. okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think that's like that's a whole different like science for itself, you know, how, how right. all this comes out. So, um, what would you say is the most challenging project you had so far? Hmm. Mm. Let me look through my website. <laughs> I completely <laughs> just like forget what I've done. Um, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, like what did I draw? <laughs> Um, it was all so I think, easy. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I've always, for some reason, I have always had trouble with private commissions. Okay, um, I see. And I've done like quite a few private commissions, but um, I've always had more trouble because I think like the groups mm -hmm. and the private commissioners, they always want me to like make the characters' faces seen and... Like they always have an idea and it's for some reason it's like separate than the idea that I want to do. Yeah. So a lot of know? art directing. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Um, but it's, it's like, for some reason it's different uh, because if it's like a gallery piece and I don't know, it's something about private commissions just make them more hard to do for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, I, a lot I, of people I, are attached. I would say a lot of people are attached and you'd want to disappoint them. I mean, in the end. Right. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's whole groups. And I think it's because, you know, it's a lot of people in each group. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're all kind of the art directors. And so, yeah, for me, it's kind of, it's a bit more, I don't want to say stressful, but it's a bit more harder. Like it's harder to capture mm -hmm. like what I want to capture and what's like right yeah. for them. As well. that's, that's, yeah. that's interesting. Cause like, I don't know. Um, I, I rarely do private commissions. I have to say, and mm. um, I, I don't know why. I just I just barely do uh, one uh, one. And um, for me, it is like the in commissions I was in before. There was not that much art directing, at least not from from my perspective. Is though I think only the commissioner did either art directing or was like basically, hey, I know this artist. I've seen art by this guy and or by yeah. th this girl, and and uh, they do great work. And I want something by this artist for mm. the piece that I love, for the, the stuff I commission. So I totally put my trust in them, and I, I would never art direct it because I, it comes out the way uh, it should come out because that's the artist's way. Yeah. Say, so. But yeah, um, other people think different, so <laughs> that's how it is. Um, next question would be, what is, uh, uh, or what is an IP or an idea you would really love to uh, work on? Um, I, I have only one <laughs> right now. Uh, I've spent 2020 playing a bunch of video games. Like I stopped, <laughs> I actually stopped watching movies like all okay. of last year. I've only seen like seven. Um, yeah, I played through the entire Yakuza franchise. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. It's like all like eight games and like a spinoff too. Uh, but I got so obsessed with that and I think. Honestly, if there's like anything I, I want to do right now, it's like probably for that franchise. Okay. But it's, I don't know. It's also what are we talking? like I. Uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, we talked. We said already. I, I thought we teased it. But yeah, I just saw the picture. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It, it's just one of those things that um, it, like, I saw that uh, Claire Hummel, uh, Shumala, she, she recently did a, like, a print for Mondo that's for the game Katamari. Mm -hmm. So that's all. A Japanese game so I was kind of like oh if she can do it <laughs> I can you know this I don't know one day something could happen um yeah keep keep but, that in mind keep that in mind off air we yeah off air okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Is, is there anything else you want to do like any other uh, maybe you want to do music sports whatever something like that or uh I do not want to do sports <laughs> only because I don't 
like I don't know anything about sports. I'm, um, but music, I would totally be down to do anything. Quick question. Mm-hmm. It's going to be stereotypical, but do you know any martial arts? Uh, I actually did take some taekwondo, uh, taekwondo there you and go. like tai chi. How about that? Yeah. Okay, I I do want to. If if people want to commission me for like martial arts movies, I'd be down. Yeah. There you go. Or or I, I would love to see you do like a like a like a key art piece for I don't know a martial arts studio. Okay. Yeah. Or some, I can. Or like like having like an infographic with movements, tai chi movements. I don't know. Mm, that would, yeah. That would be interesting. I think I would love. To, yeah. I would love to see that having like like uh, 15 different movements like in like an like an old style kind of um uh, like poster infographic right thing. i think that would be cool illustrate you know something like that yeah. like drawn in ink yeah i i could imagine definitely doing something like that um yeah i i miss doing it uh because it like classes were canceled since the pandemic yeah. so um but yeah totally all right so uh If, if, if that's going to happen, I, I want a poster. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. Great. Uh, good that we clarified that. <laughs> you heard it here, people. I have witnesses. <laughs> um, okay. Now we're going to uh, come to one of my favorite questions. Uh, I really love the answers uh, that come out of this one. And it is, um, mm-hmm. which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster? Yeah. That one was a hard question. I, uh, I want to see, because I think one of some of my favorite posters are done by artists from different cultures. Okay. And they do art, be, because I think that you know different cultures they they bring different ideas. Mm-hmm. So I'm I really like uh, old Polish movie posters. Oh, you know, they are so film. amazing. Yeah, they were amazing because they instead of like drawing the actors, they would draw. Like it's like the central idea yeah. of the film, but it's like designed so well. This, um, I really there's like those, a uh, there's like a Star Wars one, which is like amazing. I told, I told that to Kiko Sternberg because we were talking about also about Polish movie posters. Because she loves them as well, and yeah. she she uh, I told her about the Star Wars one, which like shows like a weird th- uh, C three PO that is like totally out of context. It's like totally different from anything you've ever seen. It's like incredible. Yeah, I mean, I love. I would love to. Just like have those original, you know, like Polish artists uh, do something for modern films. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I really like those kind of things. I love, um, so something that like really influences my own art is uh, ink painting. Mm-hmm. So like Asian ink painting. Uh, I love, you know, classical Chinese styles of like ink paintings. Um, so I I would like to see just like more artists like that mm-hmm. do like movie art, but in that style. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the pictures I remember linking you for that question is, um, there's this artist named Peter Lee, mm-hmm. but he did like, uh, it, it's not even a poster, but he just like illustrated the aliens mm-hmm. from Ridley Scott's, uh, like alien, but he did it in that like Chinese ink style. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like really, I, I love that kind of stuff. I think it's just like super unique. And- um okay but what what franchise what, what other franchise would you like to uh tackle him is, is he is he alive peter is he still living uh yes yeah contemporary but he i think he does it in the classical you know okay 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 this is this is gonna be a little bit tough but but keep going what, what franchise would you do uh i don't <laughs> i actually don't i well i guess because i was talking more about styles um hmm But imagine, I just don't know. imagine that, but you have, you have, I'm sorry, I have to hold you that you have to okay. say a movie or a franchise that you would love to do in that style and in this classical art style. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm like blanking out here. Pick a Let's blockbuster. Say... Okay. Maybe that's maybe makes it easier. Oh, let's do something really funny. Like it's just like two things that are totally different. Like like Die Hard, you know? Perfect. Or yeah. Die Hard got the Japanese uh, way in there, so it's okay. There's some connection. Yeah. True. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah, I think it would be really funny and just like really nice to see 
like some mm-hmm. some like serious like classical art style but like yeah. rendered in like hollywood um, you know have you have you seen the podcast of like a full interview before it's okay if you say no it's not like to put you on a spot but have you uh i have seen not a full interview but i've like briefly skimmed your okay. other here it is because uh, you probably sk- skip this question because i always ask, right. ask this one and uh, the thing is that my plan for 2021 is to um, get a book going. And in, the, in this book, there's going to be all the people that I interview. And they also answered this question, obviously. And now the challenge yeah. is to create that poster in the style they said they would by this oh, artist. Oh, okay. So you're going to do Die Hard in a classical Chinese style or this classical art style. Oh, my gosh. Did I like... <laughs> I think I like talked myself into a corner, but okay. I'll, that's your I'll challenge. Be glad to... That would be that would yeah. be if, if um, I'm, I'm trying to make it happen, and if it's happened, that's that's what you're gonna do. And you agree to it on the on the show, and like a, a lot of other people did. Like one of my favorite examples, I always say is um, one of the first ones was uh, Cavaggio uh, doing like Avengers. And yeah. uh, uh, my other favorite oh. is I've, I, Oliver Barrett. He said, uh, he, I, I always forget what the, the artist is. I never looked up also, I have to say, uh, but uh, what, he, what he said, but it was a, a, a cubism. The style was cubism uh, of this artist. And he wanted to do Mad Max Fury Road cubis, uh, cubism style. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is, this, is what you, this is what we're talking about here. Yeah. You know, another artist, I was, you see, I was trying to avoid saying like classical Western artists, because I knew like mm-hmm. a lot of other people would probably say something like that. Yeah. I do want to see something um, by Lion Decker, uh, JC Lion Decker, okay. um, because he did a lot of like very classy, you know, art, mm-hmm. but. What is, what, is a, yeah. what is a famous classical Chinese artist then? Do you have one for me? There's this guy who paints really nice horses, but I completely forgot his name right now. I, I will remember it. Mm-hmm. Is he Chinese or is that oh. Japanese? Hold on. He's Chinese. Wait, not, not horses, but uh, I just got to remember if I'm spelling his name right. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, Let's... I'll send you his name later. Because I'm I'm blanking on the name right now. It's okay. We we can edit in the in the comments or whatever, and then have it in there. That's, that's all fine. But yeah. So because I was wondering, because like that's one of the questions I always ask myself. Like you know, there's like all those uh, European and Western artists that are famous for yeah. for throughout centuries. That we all know about like Rembrandt, Dura, this and that. Yeah. And um. But I, I rarely see like um even like from from the Middle East and. and all, all from this area, you know, you rarely see paintings and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if it's about the uh, aristocracy that happened in that, in that time, the monarchies that were going on, and people said, hey, paint me, and stuff like that. I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's the def- difference here, but um, I, I always wondered that, you know? Well, I think the, the philosophy of art, first of all, I remembered his name. He didn't paint horses. He painted a lot of shrimps. But shrimps? the artist, That's the nice. prophet artist, uh, Qi Bai Shi. Bai Shi but it's, I'll, I'll send you like his name via the chat. Yeah. But he did a lot of like classical paintings of um, of shrimps and just like animals I and like that kind that. of stuff. Yeah. But I, well, I think with Chinese art, like, or to me, I see it like, and the reason why I blank out on so many of like classical Chinese artists is because I, to me, it's like there's styles. To me, it's more about yeah, the yeah, styles. Yeah, I totally understand. I, I, I and, just wondered if there's like some some famous dude and so and so on, you know? Yeah, I, I know the dude that I just sent you is, is pretty okay. famous. Yeah. Never heard, but interesting. And I like the style. I mean, it looks very cool. Alrighty, so we have that settled. Die Hard in a Kibai Shi style. <laughs> yeah, or like in a Chinese painting yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna nail it down on Kibai Shi because like this, this is what we're going with because like we always pair artist and 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 uh, right and the yeah. artist style in this case, and uh, yeah, so that's that's fine, and I uh, can't wait. 
So, so like, yeah, I'm going to talk to a couple of people that probably, hopefully make this happen in this year. And then I will definitely get back to you. And uh, I hope you find the time to create something. And it doesn't have to be digital. You can also use all kinds of mediums. We just have to scan it and get it in there. Yeah. All right. Um, then I, uh, uh, there's not, not a question for the people out there. I, I wanted to, um, uh, to know if you have some tips for the beginners out there when it comes to like hardware, software, utensils, maybe social media strategies, I don't know, something that helps the people get out there and uh, get going. Right. Um, yeah. For, for tips for beginners, uh, I would just say to draw, draw what you like, um, but to do a lot of it. I, I think that's just like the only way you get better. Mm -hmm. um, I think like I was very lucky in that when I was younger, like, I mean, I have a very supportive family, but I was also just like very, like it was kind of an obsession drawing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think I was able to start at a very young age because of it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really like, Literally, the only advice I would have is to just like draw the stuff you like, um, because that's just like the stuff that that will keep you drawing. Uh, for social media strategies, I have nothing to say except to just talk a lot, because <laughs> I, I all the time on like Twitter and stuff, um, and I think that helps you know push my visibility to other people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Sounds great. And uh, yeah, last but not least, I want to give you the chance to uh, give some shout outs to fellow artists, to friends, family, this and that, and uh, all, all, the, all, all the shebang that uh, comes with it. And um, in the end, let us know where people can find you. I have the Instagram link obviously in there. So people, uh, the Instagram handle in here. So people find you definitely, but maybe uh, your website and other media where people need to look yeah through. okay yeah i mean shout outs i have this one okay i told my friends i was going on this podcast and one of them actually <laughs> like one of them is an illustrator but like they don't do movie posters or anything but they were just like can you please shout me out <laughs> so, <laughs> okay <laughs> Sloan, um their at is uh on twitter it's pla plastic but it's it's spelled p-l-a-e-s-t uh, T two K. Um, okay. I want to shout out my very loving family <laughs> for, you know, for loving the arts and for supporting me all the way. Um, yeah. I also want to shout out, Oh, um, Tracy Ching, who has helped me, um, as like both a mentor and a, now a really, really great friend of mine. She recently did the um, official posters for, yeah. uh, the Biden Harris inauguration, uh, which was beautiful. Um, and yeah, and if people want to find me, uh, my website is zixu.co, C-O. Um, and then I can be found on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, my usernames there are, it's Zikix. So it's yeah, Z I have it down here so people see it already. Okay, yeah, Z-I-Q-Q-I-X. Perfect. So, so yeah, uh, thank you for shouting out, Tracy. So Tracy, if you see this here, this uh, please come on the show. I, I tried to get you on last year; it didn't happen, but maybe uh, times are easier for you now. So that would be also great to have her uh, here and uh, talk about her art and uh, the way that she taught you, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Alrighty, uh, Z, it has been such a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, thank you for all the people out there watching and listening to the podcast in either form and uh, next week we will have some more releases of course and then after that we will have uh, another artist i think it will be um attack peter coming on soon so stay tuned for that and i will uh yeah i will see you soon obviously with the poster posse so i uh, can't forget that and um yeah that's it thank you so much the take care all right thanks